life coach, which is always like such an intriguing, like I just wish, I don't know, I want like 20 life coaches. Like every block I go, I just want a different person like cheering me on and telling me what to do and making decisions. Does anyone else want that? Does anyone have that? Does anyone have 20 different life coaches? Okay, never mind. <laughs> okay, uh, so I'm happy to have him here. Uh, keep the applause and cheers going for Kevin Crowder. So it begins back in grade school when teachers would ask you, what do you want to be when you grow up? What did you want to be? You wanted to be an artist. What did you want to be? Astronaut. Astronaut. I wanted to be a white guy. <laughs> did anybody want to be an Asian guy? <laughs> nah, I didn't, I didn't either, actually. Uh, yeah, we'll get to that. So what happened when I was growing up, I would ask, um, I would ask white girls out in grade school, around fourth grade, and the first girl that ever said no was a blonde, beautiful Pamela Anderson looking, in my mind she was, <laughs> and I said, will you go out with me? And she said, um, I'm not into Asian guys, and I was like, oh, okay, so maybe I'll ask an Asian girl out. You know, maybe white people just date white people, right? That's kind of what happens, I guess. So I asked an Asian girl out, and I said, hey, you want to go out with me? And she says, I don't find Asian guys attractive. And I'm just like, ooh, this sucks. So Korean American adoptee, I went to uh, mostly a white high school, grade school, so I uh, went into college, actually. And I all of a sudden became like the hottest Asian guy because by default I was six feet tall. <laughs> no one's seen a six feet tall Asian guy back then. And they would say to me, you know, you like six feet, aren't they all short and like skinny and scrawny and stuff like that? And I was like, yeah, sure, whatever, you know, like. And how can I blame them? Because in the media, movies, and TV, they're all played as like Bruce Lee, right? But that was used to mock me, it wasn't used to bring me up. Then I got a lot of ching chang chong and mock oh, right? And like thinking I have a small dick and all that kind of stuff. So I grew up with very low self-esteem growing up. Very low self-esteem. I really hated the person I was actually for a very long period of time. And then in college too, they would say, well, you're not bad looking for an Asian guy. And I'm like, you're damn straight. I'm not bad looking for an Asian guy. I kind of took pride in that because that was the best compliment I got for the longest time growing up. And then it got to me. I was like, you know what? This is kind of fucked up. Like, why can't I just be good looking? Period. Why does the white guy get all of that? You know, you don't ever say, hey, yo, you're pretty good looking for a white guy. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, I'm sorry. I'm not into white guys. You don't hear that. So I grew up with a lot of low self esteem growing up. But then I saw my first role model. He was an actual model, he was Asian. And I said, hey, you know, it's kind of cool being an Asian guy now. So I thought, well, I'm the hottest white uh, Asian guy, so why don't I go up to New York and become a model? So I fail in that, miserably. Didn't realize it was a white industry. Should have figured that one out. Then I go to Asia, and I'm thinking, you know, I'm gonna be embraced in Asia. So I get a tan, and I go to the agent, and they say, you look like a slave worker. What did you do? I was like, I got a tan. They're like, yeah, slave worker get tan here. By the way, just to let you know, uh, you probably won't be working because there's a hierarchy of beauty here. White men come first, half and half, which we call hapas, so they're half Asian, half white, and then Korean American, then Chinese American. So I was very low in the totem pole right there. So I came back with my tail in between my legs. I felt really like I just couldn't embrace Asian culture for a little bit, so I became what you call a self-hating Asian guy. I hated everything I was. I hated everything that made people made fun of me. I hated when people said Bruce Lee out loud. Brings me back to childhood. <laughs> anyway, so then a lot of things happened in my life. I went to drugs and alcohol a lot, covered up the pain, resented a lot of people in my life. Drugs and alcohol wasn't enough. I became angry. Then I had this stress induced hair loss. It's called alopecia areata. If anybody's ever heard of it, you lose almost all your hair in about two weeks. And that happened rapidly. And talk about being negative. I had a very negative energy. Like, I just repelled people in my life. But what did I do? Decided to skateboard across the country from Los Angeles to New York. 
I didn't even know how to skateboard at the time. But I promise you, when you do 3,200 miles, you learn very fast. <laughs> so I skateboarded across the country. I had two objectives. I was either going to become really confident, because who the hell skateboards across the country, right? And then, if that didn't happen, then maybe I would die. And I'd be like, well, at least I hope my GoPro's on. Capture this, you know? <laughs> So that was really my thought process back then. <laughs> then what ended up happening was neither of that happened. I came back lost and hopeless more than ever. Along the road, though, I met a guy who was a life coach. So in the car, coming back from the ride with my dad, I said to him, Dad, I want to be a life coach. And he's like, Kevin, to be a life coach, you need to have a life. <laughs> I was like, Whoa, got a lot of growing to do. Well, he's just an asshole. <laughs> he's not an asshole, he's right, I had no life. So I had to get my life back together. But that's how I discovered the three E's of being confident and actually feeling good about my Asian identity. The first one was esteem. The second one was embracing. The third one was energy. Esteem, somebody once told me to have Esteem, positive self-esteem, you need to be doing esteemable acts. And I realized I was not doing esteemable acts. And then when I started to actually help other Asian people and feel confident about them and myself, I ended up getting the same return. I know it sounds cheesy, but what somebody once told me too that to find yourself, you have to lose yourself in service to others. And when I started doing that, I did start finding myself. The second one was embrace. I had to embrace my identity as an Asian guy. I also had to embrace my identity as being a Korean American adoptee. Yes, I have some white tendencies. You would too if you had white parents. <laughs> you over there. You would too if you had white parents. So you have to embrace that. And when I started to own me being an Asian male, that is also when I got energy. I got a positive energy, just my self-esteem was so high. So I started to love who I was, and I started to hate it anymore. And then it goes into the wonder part. You know, sometimes even with all these threes and practicing it every day, I often wonder sometimes what it would be like to be accepted just because you're white. This is my own personal experience, but I was just in Malaysia, and I was speaking to many white guys, and they felt a little bad because they were getting paid 10 times the amount for the same job in Malaysia just because they are white. Sometimes you need a white guy in the room just to make it look like you're an authority. I also wonder what it would be like to date someone, even of Asian culture, but when they show their photos to their family, the first words are, I thought he'd be white. That's what happens in my life. But despite that, I practice my three E's, and I can overcome those challenges. And I help other men to do the same. But now I envision, I envision a world where Asians and myself don't have to walk into a room and feel inferior just because of our color. And we don't have to put, I feel uncomfortable saying this in front of a group of white guys, we do not have to put white men on top of the pedestal. That's what I envision. Thank you.